Emergency lights are going off, sirens blaring, the spaceship is shaking like crazy. The cosmic darkness beyond the portholes is illuminated by pulsating flashes. The astronauts are strapping themselves in and looking at the screens, cold sweat breaking on their foreheads. Straight ahead, space is cut in half by a blinding beam. Nothing in the universe can stop it. It looks like a humongous airplane jet stream, millions of times more powerful than any jet could make. There's no way to go around it. The leader of the space expedition orders everyone to turn around immediately. That was a black hole jet, a real monster of space. The holes, like huge vacuum cleaners, swallow everything that falls beyond their event horizon, the boundary between space-time and the place where it disappears. If you find yourself close to this border, you're doomed. Even light can't escape the gravity of a black hole, and it's the fastest thing in the universe. The holes not only absorb matter, but also shoot jets into space, mysterious beams thousands of light years long. There are no black monsters near the Earth, but let's imagine if one suddenly popped up close to the sun. The hole immediately starts devouring the star. Strong gravity pulls one side of the sun more than the other. The hole tears the sun into ribbons, eating it just as you would eat spaghetti off your plate. Physicists call this phenomenon spaghettification. When the monsters finished its meal, it hiccups, and, like laser swords, two jets cut our galaxy in half. Astronomers are observing a similar catastrophe right now, billions of light years away from us. A black hole from the 3C321 system is bombarding a nearby galaxy with a jet of X-rays, gamma rays, and electrons accelerated to the speed of light. The onslaught has been going on for a million years, and we're lucky it's taking place at a safe distance. If a jet comes close to a planet similar to Earth, it'll vaporize the atmosphere and the ozone layer. All life on the surface will disappear. Only deep underground dwellers will survive. If a black hole does appear next to the sun, though, we won't live long enough to see the jet. The monster will absorb the energy of the star, and we'll simply lose all heat and light. The Earth will cool down, delving into eternal darkness. But, like anything else, jets can do good things too. Like fertilizers helping crops to grow, the energy of the rays squeeze the space clouds, and new stars will be born from them. Imagine a drain in the bathroom through which water flows into a pipe. The water moves in a spiral, and some of it rotates around the hole. Now imagine that the black hole is the same drain, and instead of water, there's the stuff called plasma. It spins rapidly, gets magnetized, and collects into a huge accretion disk. Plasma starts to glow, and at some point, shoots two streams into space. The black hole V404 Cygni lies 8,000 light years away. It's like a firework display that weighs as much as 10 suns. The problem is, they forgot to install it securely, and the wick was prematurely set on fire. The hole is powered by gas from a nearby star. It provides infinite charges for the space fireworks. The V404 Cygni jets don't just fire from the poles, but in every direction. A disk as wide as seven suns is spinning around the black hole. The inside of the disk is wobbling like a top that's about to stop spinning and fall. Scientists believe the wobbles and random shots are caused by distortions of the space-time continuum. Black holes are not the only ones who know how to put on a space show. Their main competitors are gamma-ray bursts. Science doesn't know exactly how they appear. Most likely, it's because of the decay of a huge star or the collision of neutron stars. Satellites record one gamma-ray burst every day, but at least 500 outbreaks occur in the universe within the same time period. An amateur astronomer first seeing the observable universe may feel like a movie star on the red carpet. 
Only, they'll be blinded not by the lights from the cameras of journalists and fans, but by constant gamma ray bursts. If there is a flash near the Earth, our planet will feel like a candle in a snowstorm. Imagine that you live in the future and can take off on safe interstellar flights. On your spaceship, you fly to a planet that looks like Earth to see a gamma ray burst with your own eyes. Your ship is cutting into outer space and landing on the planet in question. As soon as you step on its soil, though, you feel it. Every living thing in this world is waiting for something terrible to happen. Frightened birds are flying through the sky. Animals start running out of the forests and looking for shelter. The wind makes the leaves rustle, and it's like they're whispering to you, save yourself, get out of here. Then, the wind grows stronger and turns into a storm. A bright flash appears on the horizon. After a few seconds, the light intensifies. Someone huge has turned on space floodlights. Everything is lost, there is only light. As much energy is released in one second as our sun generates in 10 billion years. 10 seconds pass and the show is over. The planet is moving through space and the flash has only hit a part of its southern hemisphere. But that's enough for things to go badly. The gamma ray burst was a pretty short one, so it probably wouldn't have vaporized the oceans or blown away the atmosphere. But the ozone layer, which protects the planet from the rays of the nearest star and cosmic radiation, still disappears. All life in this world abruptly ends. The picture is terrible, but there's no need for us to panic just yet. Scientists believe the probability of a similar catastrophe on our planet is zero. But the Earth hasn't always been so lucky. The Ordovician extinction occurred 450 million years ago. Perhaps a gamma ray burst was to blame. Its epicenter was 6,000 light years away from Earth. Harmful UV light hit the planet's surface, reducing the ozone layer by 40%. More than half the plants and animals disappeared. But life continued to develop, and after 200 million years, dinosaurs began roaming the planet. Eta Carina is a hypergiant double star. It's almost 200 times heavier than the sun, and in 10 seconds, it emits as much light as the sun in a year. It's as far as 7,500 light years away from Earth. But in 1843, dwellers of our planet saw it in the night sky without telescopes. This was possible thanks to an explosion. These beautiful clouds of gas and dust are the consequences of those events. We can say these are huge ruins of a star, but they look cool. Over the next one million years, Eta Carina will continue exploding and form a gamma ray burst. But even here, humanity needn't worry. The direction of the gas clouds indicates that the future burst beams won't hit the Earth. Our planet is under siege. Right now, 30 million space objects, varying in size from a grain of sand to a car, are flying towards the Earth. But our atmosphere burns all border violators. Scientists are constantly monitoring space, and they haven't found a single space rock potentially hazardous for humanity. But this doesn't mean it doesn't exist. A huge asteroid arrives to Earth once every two million years, on average. Here are the surfaces of the Moon, Mars, and Mercury. Craters cover them like cheese holes. These are the tracks of asteroids that have been bombarding their surface for millions of years. An atmosphere is an excellent barrier against the rock shower from the skies. But every year, around 500 large objects still make their way through it. Most of them fall into the ocean or sparsely populated areas and remain unknown. Geological activity continues on the planet. The continents move, mountains rise and fall. As you watch this video, the landscape of the Earth is changing. 
All of this erases all traces of meteorites that have fallen on the planet. You step on the surface of the moon. It's unusual. You definitely feel lighter here, and it's easier to walk. You decide to check out that obsessive idea of yours. Jump on Earth's natural satellite. And even despite your bulky spacesuit, you literally fly up into the air. Woohoo! Anyway, you continue your walk on the surface of the moon when you feel something strange. The ground under your feet is… is it shaking? It feels as if an earthquake has just started on the moon. But that's simply impossible. Or is it? Surprisingly, your gut feeling hasn't let you down this time. Moonquakes do exist. In fact, there are four types of moonquakes that are strong enough to be detected from a large distance. There are deep moonquakes occurring more than 430 miles below the surface. Then there are meteoroid impacts. Thermoquakes occur when the frigid lunar crust expands. It happens when the morning sun illuminates the satellite after a two-week-long deep freeze lunar night. And there are also shallow moonquakes. They're the only ones that are similar to earthquakes on our planet. Shallow moonquakes happen 12 to 19 miles below the surface, and they're the most powerful and dangerous. Between 1972 and 1977, the Apollo Seismic Network recorded 28 such moonquakes, and some of them measured more than 5 on the Richter scale. On Earth, such an earthquake is strong enough to crack plaster and move heavy furniture. Plus, shallow moonquakes are very long-lasting in compared to earthquakes. Once they get going, they can continue for up to 10 minutes. As for the average earthquake, it typically continues for 10 to 30 seconds. Scientists are still not sure what causes shallow moonquakes, and even where exactly they occur. One of the theories is that moonquakes happen at the rims of large, relatively young craters that probably slump from time to time. Interestingly, the Moon and Earth aren't the only places where earthquakes occur. No, scientists have recorded quakes, tremors, vibrations, and shakes in other regions of our solar system, too. Let's take Mercury, for example. A few years ago, scientists discovered that this planet was shrinking, and that's why it seems to be so tectonically active. Or Venus. This world is a tectonic puzzle for experts. At the moment, Venus has no tectonic plates, and it might have never had them. But its surface has folds and faults and looks as if it could have tectonic plates. On the other hand, these features might have appeared because of other processes, for example, volcanic activity. But even though we haven't observed any Venus quakes, scientists believe they could detect them since their vibration seems to ripple through the thick atmosphere of the planet. Now, Mars. We know for sure that this planet is seismically active. NASA's lander placed a seismometer on the surface of the red planet. And in 2019, it managed to measure its first Mars quake. After that, the lander continued to record quakes. But they were so weak that if they happened on our planet, they'd be completely covered by the background noise of Earth's oceans. But a space body doesn't have to be a full-fledged planet to have active tectonics. Let's take Pluto. This dwarf planet is geologically active at the moment. In 2014, NASA's New Horizons spacecraft was flying through the Pluto system when it recorded complex geological features on this dwarf planet. Scientists concluded that Pluto might have quakes, or should I call them Pluto quakes, when its liquid water ocean freezes and thaws beneath the dwarf planet's icy crust. Jupiter's moons Europa and Io, as well as Saturn's moons Titan and Enceladus, are also geologically active despite their small size. Their features range from volcanoes and water plumes to potential subsurface oceans. Now, I bet you don't know these cool facts about earthquakes that occur on our planet. There's one place on Earth where a whopping 90% of all earthquakes occur. It's called the Ring of Fire, and it stretches around the Pacific Ocean from New Zealand all the way to South America. Hmm, looks to me more like a horseshoe. Anyway. Experts claim that these countless earthquakes are caused by the abundance of volcanoes in that region and the constant movement of the tectonic plates. Around half a million earthquakes happen on Earth every year, but many of them occur very, very deep in the Earth's crust, and only special equipment can detect them. We feel around 20% of earthquakes, and only 100 of them can cause damage. The largest recorded earthquake occurred in Chile in May 1960. It was a magnitude 9.5 on the Richter scale, 
It was truly devastating. During that earthquake, seismographs detected and recorded seismic waves that traveled all over the world. They shook the planet for many days. As for the most powerful earthquake that occurred in the U.S., it was 9.2 and happened in Alaska. By the way, Alaska, along with California, is the most earthquake-prone state in the U.S. and one of the most seismically active regions in the world. A magnitude 7 earthquake occurs there almost every year. A mega-earthquake can actually shorten the length of a day for the entire planet. NASA claims that really large earthquakes can shift our planet's axis and, thus, change the duration of a day. Now, of course, you won't notice it since this change is measured in microseconds, and one microsecond is one millionth of a second. Scientists think that the 9.1 Sumatra earthquake, which occurred in 2004, shortened the day by 6.8 microseconds. Now, not even the best specialists can predict an earthquake. That's mostly because the mechanisms that trigger earthquakes are extremely deep underground. But these days, people have learned how to figure out a more precise time frame of when an earthquake might occur. Earthquakes can be triggered by volcanic eruptions or, let's say, meteor impacts. But most of them are caused by the movements of our planet's tectonic plates. Earth's surface consists of 15 to 20 constantly moving tectonic plates. Pressure increases when they shift, and this can make the crust of our planet break. San Francisco is moving toward Los Angeles right at this moment. The speed of its movement is about 2 inches per year. That's as fast as your fingernails grow. It's happening because the two sides of the San Andreas Fault, which is the continental fault extending 750 miles through California, are slipping past each other. So, in several million years, Los Angeles and San Francisco will be neighbors. Lakes, ponds, and canals become slightly warmer and start to stink before an earthquake. It happens because gases get released when tectonic plates shift. Most animals feel these signs and change their behavior. For example, scientists noted toads completely disappearing before an earthquake in Italy in 2009. But as soon as the natural disaster was over, they returned. Even after an earthquake is over, you might still see water sloshing around in your swimming pool. There's no need to worry. This is a phenomenon called a seiche. The water can keep sloshing around for hours after the earthquake is over. For example, the pool at the University of Arizona lost some water from a seiche caused by an earthquake in Mexico that occurred 1,200 miles away. On February 27, 2010, a massive earthquake started in Chile. It measured 8.8 on the Richter scale. As a result, Earth's crust in that region was ripped so dramatically that a city called Concepcion moved 10 feet to the west. Another earthquake resulted in the tallest mountain in the world, Everest, shrinking by one inch. It happened in 2015 when a magnitude 7.5 earthquake caused several Himalayan mountains to decrease in size. The Japanese used to believe that earthquakes were caused by Namazu, a giant catfish that lived submerged in the mud under the Japanese islands. The fish would thrash about, causing seismic activity. As for the ancient Greeks, they were sure that a powerful sea deity, Poseidon, produced earthquakes by hitting his trident against the earth when he was angry. According to Hindu mythology, eight elephants hold earth in place. They are, in turn, balanced on the back of a ginormous turtle, standing on the coils of an even larger snake. And every time any of these animals moves, an earthquake occurs. An hour after people disappear, most urban areas will be left empty and quiet. Perhaps the sound of wind, falling leaves, or other natural sounds previously drowned out by city noise and traffic will be heard. The subways of many cities are protected from groundwater by a system of pumps. If there are no people to monitor such systems, most subways will flood within 36 hours. Due to malfunctions, sewage treatment plants will stop working, leading to pollution of rivers and lakes with wastewater. The water pipes in Detroit will become unusable, leading to the flooding of the city. Food and refrigerators will spoil. Raccoons and wolves will inhabit abandoned human homes. 
Major airports will be covered in rust and overgrown with ivy. Cruise ships in Alaska will sink under the weight of ice that accumulates on them. Lions from the San Diego Zoo will gradually escape, emboldened by the power outage of the electric fence around their enclosures. More and more black cats will appear on the streets of Rome and the Vatican. Rats and mice will consume all edible reserves and leave the cities. Plants will begin to grow in cracks in streets, highways, sidewalks, and buildings. More and more animals will notice the absence of people and flock to the cities. International Space Station will gradually decrease. Since no one will correct its orbit, the station will eventually fall to Earth and burn up. Along with it, digitized samples of human DNA will perish. A large part of the city's territory will be covered with a vegetation of lianas, grasses, and tree seedlings. The red square in Moscow will have a layer of soil and thick grasses growing, making the square completely green. Despite high levels of radiation, animal populations are increasing in abandoned areas. Plants have grown in many houses and buildings. Seawater will flood cities that were once drained by artificial drainage systems, such as London and Amsterdam. Satellites will begin to fall to Earth. Since no one maintained their speed of movement, they slowly approached Earth and eventually fell to the planet's surface. Wolves now roam freely around the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin, and wild boars will be seen in Paris. Human speech will be preserved in rare words that parrots have memorized during their years of living with humans. Snakes will not only reproduce at incredible rates, but also grow much larger in size. Their main prey will be rodents that have multiplied in the first years after humans disappeared. Many human-made structures will collapse within 100 years, primarily those with a large number of steel elements. Fruit Christmas cakes, thanks to their alcohol coating, will not only retain their appearance but also freshness. Most buildings will be overtaken by plants and animals, and the city will resemble more of a wild nature landscape. The period of nuclear fuel decay will come to an end, and as a result, dead zones around the ruins of nuclear power plants will once again become habitable. The last parrots that spoke human language may go extinct since they memorized human speech, but it is simply not necessary for their survival in the wild. All modern carriers of information that preserve human culture, laser discs, photographic film, paper and the like, will turn to dust. Rebar inside concrete buildings, which are more durable than steel ones, will expand three times due to rust causing the destruction of concrete structures. Most modern cities will be covered by a green blanket, and collapsed skyscrapers and buildings will become new hills. Manhattan will return to its former state before human settlement, with numerous streams and lakes. There will be almost no evidence of the existence of human civilization. Only powerful stone buildings that rely solely on the force of gravity will survive such as Notre-Dame de Paris. Of the products that existed during human civilization, only honey, especially in clay pots, and oil in wooden barrels, will be well preserved. Only a few stone structures will survive, including the pyramids in Giza and the Sphinx, almost entirely buried in the sands of the desert, and fragments of the Great Wall of China. By this time, a new ice age will begin on Earth. It is expected that the KEO satellite will enter the atmosphere by this time. Various pieces of space debris will collide with it during its descent, but this will not destroy the satellite. Eventually, it will fall into the waters of the world ocean. Remnants of spacecraft and satellite debris will float through space as the only reminder of human civilization.